So do not ignore this putting advice. We've enlisted the help of the best putting coach in the world, Phil Kenyon, as give us three very simple tips to help you improve your putting. Hi guys, it's Rick Shields. If you're new to my YouTube channel, welcome. Hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any videos. Hit the like button if you enjoyed this new type of video and leave me a comment down below. I'd love to hear your thoughts. So at the British Masters, I was joined by Phil Kenyon. Phil Kenyon coaches some of the best players on the planet. You've got Tommy Fleetwood, Justin Rose, Francesco Molinari, the list goes on. And I asked him to give you guys three very simple ways to improve your putting. Let's hear what he says. Personally, for me, I think you've got three skills which you've got to try and master. The first one is, can you start your ball online? And if you, if you look at the pros, one of the things that they're very skilled at is the ability to start the ball online. If you have, um, if you can develop accuracy to within half a degree, then that is a really, really elite level. You know, if you've got accuracy that's nowhere, in, well, if you're as poor as two degrees of error in your start line, you're going to miss the hole from five feet. So developing that skill is paramount. It's a great advice by Phil. How many of us overcomplicate our swing mechanics and don't focus on one of the main points, starting the golf ball online? Very simple drill for that is to set up a little bit of a gate. So I've just used two tee pegs out here on the golf course, and I'm gonna look at a gap that I can slide the golf ball through. Now that's a relatively generous gap. You could go even smaller, but start generous and try and get a little bit closer. If you're at home, you could even replace those tee pegs with a couple of golf balls and you're trying to hit it through that gap. Then ideally, and again, this is a preference, use the line on the golf ball to line through that gap, keeping your putter as square as possible. And your main objective is to stroke the putter and the ball straight through the tee pegs. That way you're gonna be more consistent. You're gonna hold more putts and you're gonna start the ball online. Right, over to Phil for simple tip number two. I see a lot of amateurs, they don't really appreciate the importance of speed. So if you uh, could picture a 10 foot putt on an average slope, average green speed, you've got less than 5% of error in terms of your initial ball speed to actually make that putt on your chosen line. So you've got to be very accurate in the delivery of your intended speed. Now, obviously practicing speed control then becomes very, very important. You've got to be able to strike the ball out the middle. If you're not striking the ball out the middle, you're going to get inconsistent speed off the putter face. But what I also see is amateurs will practice the speed control on the same putt. The reality is when you're on the golf course, you've got ever-changing putts, uphill, downhill, right to left, left to right. So I would encourage variability in practice. I'd encourage you to put to a fake hole and you know change the uphill, downhill, left to right, right to left, and be trying to match your intended speed, try and roll the ball through at one foot past, try and roll the ball through at two foot past, three foot past. So you're always trying to change your intention and match, match your intention. And for me, that's a better way to, to develop or acquire skill. Amazing advice again there by Phil, talking about speed control and how finding the middle of the club face is crucial. A simple way of finding the middle of the club face, get a couple of pieces, a sticky tack, Place it on the putter face, just wider than the golf ball would sit on the face, away from that center line. And the idea, you wanna hit the middle of the club face. If you don't hit the middle, it'll stick to the sticky tack and go nowhere. Amazing for finding the middle of the club face at home or in practice. And then, he was talking about rolling the golf ball past the hole to an intended distance past and on different slopes. So I've actually just on the green here, found an old cut out hole to use from this, so you're not actually using a real hole. And I'm gonna try and put this ball, let's say two foot past. So I've hit one, two, about two foot, two inches. So my intended was two foot, I hit it just past two foot. That works all right. You could even go to a tee peg. This time I'm gonna just try and drop it to the tee peg. This is a downhill put this time. I'm just gonna try and drop it to almost rest against the tee peg. And that's okay. It's about a foot past speedy put downhill. Now, if you have one of these, this is a fake hole. So just a, a round circle that you could also put to. Now this time, I'm gonna intend to try and leave this just short. 
the more times you do this on different slopes, the better your skill starts to come at reading the speed of greens and getting it better out of the golf course. I'm going to try and leave this about six inches short. Or right in the middle of the hole. I need a little bit more practice there. But as you can see, you're going to get better by learning the mechanics, learning those concepts to get your speed right. Finding the middle of a club face, put into a fake target and matching your intended speed. Right, Phil, over to you for simple advice number three. So third thing that I would see with amateur golfers is they don't really have a, a good concept in terms of green reading. They're reliant very much on instinct over the ball and that can be driven by poor technique at times. So I'd encourage people to get out on the green, try and find different slopes and try and find where the straight put would be. Um, and then from there, place balls around at different angles relative to that straight put. Hit puts, you know, pay attention to how much that ball is going to curve and then go and find a different slope. Go and find a slope that looks a little bit steeper. Find the straight put, place balls around that straight put, hit puts, pay attention to how much that ball is curving. So um, from there, you're going to get a sense in, and build up a feel for how much a ball will break dependent upon the slope you're putting on and the angle that you're putting across. How good is this advice? You know, this guy is the best putting coach in the world and he's making it unbelievably simple. Talking about being able to judge slope. So find the straight put. When you're out on the practice green, find the straight put. Simplest way of doing that, as you walk around the hole, you'll start to feel which foot is higher or lower than the other. Right now, I'm at the exact level position. If I take a stride to my left, my right foot now is lower than my left. And if I go a stride to my right, now my left foot is lower than my right. So, with all intents and purposes, this putt is going to be straight. I know what the straight one does, because my feet were level, I can hit this dead straight at the hole and drop it in. Now this putt, because my right foot was lower than my left, this is going to slope left to right. Now it's not far away from that straight putt, so it's not going to slope too much. As I start to go this way, it's going to start to slope a little bit more. I can aim just to the left here. Know that the slope is going to slope right, left to right. And drop in the hole. And then on this side, because I've gone to the right side of that straight line, this time this is a right to left foot. I know it is because I know where straight is. Right edge of the hole and drop it in. almost it moved right to left though but what you can see there is you're starting to acquire your skill you know where straight is you know where your left to right puts are and you know where your right to left puts are practice on different slopes uphill downhills working out where straight is and then going around the hole to find how much it slopes you've got to acquire these skills but it will make you a better putter so there you go three incredibly simple tips to help you hold more putts thanks to phil for his time if you want to check out phil on his social media the link is down below awesome guy awesome coach and a coach to the stars we were lucky enough to spend some time with him guys if you enjoyed the video smash that like button leave us a comment down below subscribe to the channel if you're new around here we shall see you next time hopefully holding some more putts